All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. As part of the Rankin Technical College AWD or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular the AWD 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class, I've been doing a series of ASP.NET MVC5 related videos, all right, including the textbook we're using for the class, Pro ASP.NET MVC5 5th Edition Adam, by Adam Freeman. That's an APRES text. And there are 27 chapters in the book, and I've done lectures on every one of those chapters. Chapters 7 through 13 in the book go through a real, they have you build a real example of a ASP.NET model view controller or MVC5 project called Sports Store. But before doing that, I've made the decision that I wanted to go over a couple tutorials, all right? The first one is get started with Entity Framework 6, code first, using, M oop, using MVC5. Don't want to do that. <clears throat> All right, so we're on that one, and we're about two-thirds or more of the way through it. And when we get done with this one, we're going to go into getting started with Entity Framework 6, database first using MVC5. A little longer than the one we're working on right now. But right now we don't have much on our page. It looks like this. Like I said, not much, but we haven't built it in a while either. So it says, now we'll create a web page to display data. The process of requesting the data automatically triggers the creation of our database. We'll begin by creating a new controller. But before you do that, this is important. You need to build the project to make the model and context classes available to the controller structure. What does that mean? That means that before we start, we come in here. Don't think we'll need the web config file anymore. Yeah, we'll save it. I don't think we'll need the initializer file. Yep, we'll save it. I don't think we'll need the context file. We'll save it. Could just do a save all. Uh, in fact, let's do that. I don't think we'll need the course file. I don't think we'll need the enrollment file or the student. I'm going to leave this index one up and close the layout file. All right. So what the author is saying, we should do a build, build solution before we do anything. This will gray out. Could be anywhere up to 30 seconds. Could be as fast as you see as three or four seconds. So we want to right click on our controllers folder, add new scaffolded item, and we want it to be the MVC5 controller with views using the entity framework. All right. <clears throat> It says here in the Add Controller dialog box, make the following selections. In fact, let's bring it up. I think we can do that. I thought it would let us do that. Let's see. Well, the model class will be student. All right. It says if you don't see it, try to build it again. So the model class will be student. There it is. All right, I'm not done yet. Next, the data context class should be school context. That very well may be the only thing that's in there anyway. OK. Next, the controller name should be student controller, singular, not plural, and then leave all the defaults for everything else. So it says students now, change it to student, click add. What this does is not only does it create for us in our controller a student controller, but there will be a student folder in the views, and that student folder will have a bunch of stuff in it as well. 
create, delete, details, edit, and view. All right? And we'll have basically calls to all that stuff in here as well. Now, okay, when you click Add, the scaffolder creates that exactly what I just told you. All right, let's check out a couple things before we go on here. First, let's click on here where it says Show All Files and refresh okay that's got everything in here now let's do a file save all okay we've got that as well all right then let's jump back into here it says visual studio opens the student controller we'll see that we have a database context thing called db there it is should be able to let's see once let's see if I come in here and do this on set <clears throat> all right so that's this can make it a little bigger Okay. All right. It says the index action method gets a list of students from the student entity by reading the student's property of the context instance. So in other words, this return view that's right here, this line, okay, says that we should go in there and basically take a look at every student that we added to that initializer file and show it. All right. The index should display this stuff as a table. Student index. There it is. This display name for these are our labels. And then this will display all the student information. And for each student, we will have an Edit, Details, and Delete button. Press Control plus F5 to run the project. If you get a cannot show, cannot create shadow copy error, close the browser and try it again. We shouldn't get that. So. Come back to here. Let's run the program. We can either click here or, as the author says, do a control F5. I don't think we'll get any kind of an error that it can't read, you know, a shadow error or whatever they call that. Taking just a couple minutes to load this in. Let's check our time while we're doing that. We're at eight minutes, so we're doing fine. All right, so there we have that. Here are our students. And you'll notice that as we I can become a little bigger, edit, and bring up any student. So I can make a change. Changes, for example, to Alex Carson. Click Save, and you see it's changed. All right, take it back again. Make it Alexander again, save, and it's back. I can click Details to find out just the information. All right. I can go to Edit from there if I want to. And if I want to delete it, I'm not going to, but it'll ask me. All right. All right, so we've done all that. We've got this now. Everything's looking fine. Okay, viewing the database. Again, I'm kind of surprised, for lack of better words, that I'm going through this as quickly as I am. I am now on. I've 
created this as a Word document for you as well. The view the database part. So I'm on page 27 of 29 pages. So we're just about finished here. All right. It says, when you ran the student's page and the application tried to access the database, the entity framework discovered there was no database, so it created one. It then ran the seed method, and it populated the database with data. You can use either Server Explorer or SQL Server Object Explorer to view the database in Visual Studio. For this tutorial, we'll use Server Explorer. So it says to close the browser. Okay, I just did want to mention before I did, this is student, but notice if I type in and type in course, I thought it was course, maybe it's courses. All right, so it's not. What were the name of those three things? There was enrollment. Oh, I'm, I know why I'm getting those. Okay, I'm getting them because I don't have, I don't have controllers built for them. Okay, all right. But what I wanted to show you is all the information, all of the database information is now in there, just so you're aware of that. All right. So the author says that what we want to do in here is first close the browser. And did I? No. All right. So that's closed. In Server Explorer, well, I'm in Server, Server Object Explorer, but I... Can I do a view? Yep, there's Server Explorer. Okay. Expand the data connections. It says you may need to select refresh first. There's our data connections. School context, I think everybody can see that. If it comes in red like this, again, typically when you refresh, that red will go away. It looks like it's not here, but let's, let's just keep going. So click on there. Click on Tables. There's our course table, our enrollment table, our student table. We just looked at the student. Notice again, the database has been built for us. We can open up the table definition. We can see that it was smart enough, the system was smart enough, that it took our ID field and it made it the primary key added our last name, added our first name, and our enrollment date. Not only that, if we look at here at show table data, there are our 10 or so students, eight students, I guess. We can close these. Do the same thing with enrollment. In other words, I can open the table definition. Enrollment ID, you can see, is a primary key. Okay. Notice it grade is a one, two, three, or one, you know, one, two, or three, basically. A one, two, three, or four, A, B, C, or F. But that's what we used, I believe, with grade. We made that originally as our enum, and enums are showed, shown as ints. Notice since we had the question mark there, the allowed nulls is checked. If we go here and we show the data, there we've got it. And notice we've got one, two, three, three occasions out of 12 where there is no grade. All right. We can close those. And again, open up course. Open the table definition. Once again, course ID is the primary key. We have title and credits. We can right mouse click, show the data, and there it is. <clears throat> so we did basically all the stuff that's shown here, and the author says the Contoso University 1.mdf and LDF files are in the user profile folder. I'm not even sure what that is. What it could do, okay is I could come over to where I have the actual project. Sorry, I've got to clean this up. It's pretty messy. So this is our project. I can open that and just type in here 
star dot mdf. I'm just wondering if it's in here, period. It says no. Okay? So it's not in here, but it, as it says, it's in our user profile folder. All right. The author says that if we make a change, you already saw that. I made a change and I ran the application. I did it while the application was running. So some conventions here. As again, we're just about finished up with this. All right. Now, I'm at 1539. I'm going to keep going until I finish this. The amount of code you had to write for the EF to be able to create a complete database was minimal because of what the author calls here conventions or assumptions that the entity framework makes. It says some of them have already been noted or were used without you even being aware of them. Pluralized forms are table names. Property names are used for column names. Properties that are named ID or some kind of a class name ID are primary keys. A property is a foreign key if it's got the navigation stuff on it. All right. Now, I'm going to go in where it says download the completed project. I'm going to save the link. And I'm going to go to my desktop. Go to my ASP.NET or ASP.NET folder. Go to my code first. And I'm just going to drop it in here. I have no idea if it works or not. All right. So last page, page 29, the last page that's in here. If you want more information, there are some examples, some stuff you can go to. <clears throat> so in this tutorial, we created the MVC web app. We set up our styling. We installed EF6. We created the data model. We created the database context. We initialized the database with text data, test data. We set up Entity Framework 6 to use local DB. We created a controller <clears throat> that had multiple views. We viewed the database. I'm not going to do this advanced to next article because, again, what I'm going to do is go in next, go through the getting started with Entity Framework database first. So we're going to flip this switch, so to speak, and instead of doing what we just did here, which was code first, we're going to come in and do the other one of these, which is on database first. Now, this thing we just finished was <clears throat> 29 pages. This new one is 40 pages or so, 39, about 10 more pages, but it's got a lot of screenshots in it, so hopefully take about the same amount of time. I'll be back to start that one shortly.